I'm Melissa Peters. I'm assistant professor of dance here at Valdosta State University. And this is my dad, Pro Football Hall of Famer Pete Pihos. He passed away after a long battle with Alzheimer's disease in August 2011. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He was an Indiana University all-star football player, a World War II veteran, a Philadelphia Eagle player. He was with them for nine seasons, and he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which not many men are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's in several other Hall of Fames too. I've been uncovering his legacy for the past 15 years. Although he is forever immortal, immortalized in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I've worked diligently to honor him, to share his story and keep his memories alive through my creativity, specifically dance, choreography and filmmaking. So I loved my dad immensely and he suffered with Alzheimer's disease and dementia because of concussions from playing football for 12 years. I looked up to him and he was a larger than life. Although he was one of the greatest football players of all time, the most important thing to know is that he was a loving, giving father to me. And it was really difficult watching him go through slowly deteriorating before my eyes. And I can't describe the hurt that I felt watching him grow through this. This was one of the most difficult battles he ever faced in his life. And I walked with him and supported him all along this journey. And I am still on the journey with him. This is a, and then I had to develop a new type of relationship with my father with Alzheimer's, which was an interesting switch for me. When I was in graduate school getting in my MFA in dance, I had to create a culminating work. It's a thesis work. And I decided to create a uh, documentary film slash dance multimedia performance. And it explores his amazing life and then his battle with Alzheimer's, and it's called P. Host, a Moving Biography. This was a challenging feat, both emotionally and artistically, but it gave me an outlet to help me process and deal with my grief. And here's some pictures from it. I wish I had time to show you video, but that would take a long time. The show is an hour long. So my dad was 51 when I was born. And there, are many, there were many years and memories to uncover. I wanted to rediscover who he was as a person, as a teammate, as a friend, as a father, as a husband. So it's kind of, there's a lot of video that I did. I conducted interviews. There's World War II archival interviews, or World War II archival footage and football footage of him playing, you're kind of introduced to who my dad was due to the complexities of Alzheimer's disease, like what he had become. And then you go back in time and learn who he was before the disease. The truth of his illness is definitely revealed in the performance and also what happened to this father-daughter relationship. So while in graduate school, my, one of my professors was like, hey, maybe you should, you know, take a film class if you're going to be doing this. And I was like, okay. So I took all my outside classes in the film department. And I, my first class was documentary film production, and I created Dear Dad. And you can go out there and watch it. It's out there in, in the world. Um, it's six minutes long. It has screened at several film festivals across the United States, and it's won several awards. First film I made, and it's very moving, and it was sort of the catalyst of creating this. Back to these pictures. I like to describe P. Hosa moving biography as you go see a movie and dancers sort of come on and off stage. Sometimes you're watching just film, Sometimes you're watching dancers and film, kind of like what's happening now. I'm being projected in front, the projection is behind me. And then sometimes you're just watching dance and there's an audio soundscape happening. Um, Dad's disease progressed 
pretty, uh, so when I was in my final, uh, when I was working on this, my dad was in the final stages of Alzheimer's disease and it was really difficult. So his disease progressed and he had to be moved into a, a skilled care nursing facil facility, which was very difficult. Um, he wanted to be at home and be around us all the time. And so that was difficult to watch him go through that. But what I did was whenever I visited him, I took the camera with me because I wanted to capture what Alzheimer's truly looks like. Some days he was clear, some days he was confused and agitated. And Alzheimer's is tough because the brain can no longer fight infections normally anymore. And he was in and out of the hospital and the hospice home multiple times. And I don't know how many times I had to say goodbye to him, but he just wasn't ready to go yet. He would get quote unquote better. And I think that he stayed alive for me to finish this. And so he, I finished it in March, 2011, and he died in August, 2011. So thinking about this, um, this is sort of a graphic we created. I'm gonna to talk to you about kind of how the show works, and then I'll get into it a little later. There's also another side to his story that I've just recently uncovered as well. So it starts out with dad with Alzheimer's. And let me go back one. You can maybe try to figure out what these look like. Then there's July 31st, 1937, which I'll get into. College football, World War II, pro football, the wives. He had four different wives in his lifetime. The onset of Alzheimer's. And then dear dad is kind of the finishing thing. So... It took me four years to create, and I actually reworked the show after he died. Um, I wanted to shoot some more things, and so I reworked it. Um, but creating this was such a healing process for me. I was constantly thinking about ways to honor him, and it was difficult to create from such a vulnerable place. I was scared. I was scared that I wouldn't honor him well, and I was scared to be just that vulnerable as an artist, but I felt guided. I felt guided within myself, from my family, my professors, and my friends. One decision I struggled with was to show him in his own vulnerable state with Alzheimer's, but he was okay with it. Like I said, I think he just kind of stuck around for me to finish and then he was ready to go. So getting into the sections, this is Dad with Alzheimer's. It's a short solo performed by me, footage from Dear Dad, and you're kind of introduced to Dad with Alzheimer's. The next section, July 31st, 1937. My grandfather, my dad's father, was brutally murdered in Orlando, Florida on July 31st, 1937. And I think this had a profound effect on my dad's life and who he was to become. So I had to travel to Orlando and find these articles surrounding the murder. I found his grave site, which I had never visited as a child. I found the place where he was actually murdered. He was hatcheted 15 times in the back of the head. So very brutal, violent murder. And this is another, this is from the actual piece. That's actually me jumping. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was, that was a nice experience, like going there and uncovering all of that. Then I traveled to Chicago because um, dad and his mom moved to Chicago after his father was murdered. So I uncovered his high school football career at Austin High School, Indiana University. While he was at Indiana, he took a year off to go fight for our country in World War II. He was in the 35th Infantry under General Patton. He was in Normandy, Battle of the Bulge, very a uh, few other combat missions. He received uh, bronze and silver stars and a battlefield commission. And these are from a scrapbook that I found that I have of his from World War II. Um, so that's a little part of his life when I traveled to, to Chicago. This kind of represents, so that also brings me into, this is the World War II and the pro football section. And basically there's profound images of war, combat training, 
And I wanted to show the physicality of being at war and also playing football and how those two kind of, they have the same mentality and physicality with each other and what kind of, you know, grueling training was involved and also like the trauma involved from both of these, these areas. I traveled to Canton, Ohio, which I, I travel there every year to the Pro Football Hall of Fame to represent my dad at the enshrinement ceremony. I also traveled to D Detroit, Michigan to interview Iron Mike Ditka, Pat Summerall. He played for the Giants. He was a sports announcer and he played against my dad. And then my dad's sweet friend, he's my dad's teammate, Al Wistert. He played for the Eagles as well. So I just want to figure out who he was before I knew him. I also traveled to Philadelphia and I was able to interview some of his teammates that were still alive. And then I went up and down the East Coast to interview some of my family members. Now we get to the wives piece. My dad had four different wives in his lifetime. These are actually when we did the show in Valdosta. So these are Valdosta State VSU dancers here. Um, I kind of get into the more private side of my dad's life. You learn about his relationships. He was very good at football, but not very good at relationships. And then you learn about each wife that he had and the, how that evolved. But you also learn about my mom, his fourth and final wife, who basically supported him through his descent in Alzheimer's. And until he died, she was right there by his side. The next section, the onset of Alzheimer's. I interviewed my dad's neurologist, Dr. John Porter. Basically, it's an abstract look at Alzheimer's disease. The dancers represent a normal functioning brain and what happens when it breaks down. And then I'm gonna read to you what the film projection means because it's kind of wordy, but the film projection explores the blurry, blurring line between clinical explanations of Alzheimer's disease and the more visceral abstracted visualization of memory loss, repetition, shocks of noise, shocks of images are represents the last grasp of memories that are fading away. So that's sort of what that piece is about. Then obviously Dear Dad is the last part. Now, a little less than a year after my dad passed away, I took the show on tour. Um, this was in 2012. I set these shows up as Alzheimer's Association fundraiser events. And then I did a silent auction before the show too and figured out you know, how these proceeds could go to the Alzheimer's Association. Um, all ticket sales went there. So these are all the places we went. Um, so, and we went, did it in Valdosta in 2018. Every time I do the show, I feel so close to my dad and I get to spend time with him again. Audience members tend to leave either speechless or in tears, but then it also inspires them to think about loved ones and think about creating something that on their own to honor them. This brings me back to the power of creativity and how healing it is for grief. I encourage you to create something in a way that works best for you. If you're losing a loved one or you're dealing with grief, perhaps it's writing, drawing, cooking, decorating. Create something to honor them in some way and it will help you with your grieving process. So to add to the story, a woman contacted me on March 2021, and she, had, she lives in Fontainebleau, France. She had found my dad's dog tag in a forest near her house. Um, I was thinking about possible ways to continue to add to my dad's story, maybe a screenplay, a book, and then this happened. NFL Films just did a feature on this, and it came out in January. It's on YouTube. It's out there on Facebook. It's on the NFL Network. And um, it's just been a, I, I felt like dad was telling me to continue with his story from beyond. Um, the dog tag came 10 years after I created P Host, the dog tag email, sorry, came 10 years after I, I created P Host, a movie bi biography. 
I just traveled to France, December 2021, and I was able to shoot in this area and walk around where my dad had fought in a battle 75 years ago. And NFL Films actually used our footage in their feature. So this is, encourages me to continue to create using him as inspiration. All of this has helped my grief process in many ways, and I have something to give back to him, and that makes me happy. Even though he's not here anymore, he is present through me and through his story. I can encourage you to go create. If you are dealing with grief or a loss of a loved one, creativity is such a healing process. Honoring their memory will bring you closer to them and it will strengthen your love for them that you cannot even imagine what that feels like. You will also learn quite a bit about yourself and just how strong you are. Thank you.